hi there this is he's my son and thank you for clicking on our YouTube channel today in this video we will be going to Alcatraz Island in San Francisco California home of the famous Island Penitentiary in San Francisco Bay the National Park Service who runs the island has offered a night tour for quite a while now and we've always wanted to do it I had some technical difficulties as well as some nature related difficulties with the cormorant flies so most of my footage was still photos from in and around the prison which I'm showing you now. The video later on will be our boat ride over as well as the assisted ride up to the cell block narrated by the park service rangers. We hope you stick around and listen to all the information they have to share as it was very informative and if you like what you see please like and subscribe to help grow our channel so we can do more things like this and show them to you. If you want to visit Alcatraz yourself, I would recommend booking the tickets a few months ahead of time on the National Park Service website, as it does so well and it's quite popular that there's unlimited walk-up tickets available the day of. Another major issue in San Francisco right now is going to be the parking and finding a safe place to park your vehicle near the ferry to Alcatraz Island. We found a lot that was close by where most of the cars were in the lot were broken into when we came back from the ferry after the tour though. Vehicle burglary is a huge issue in San Francisco right now and there were six or seven vehicles broken into when we returned to the parking lot after seeing Alcatraz. Parking in San Francisco hotels and in general is very expensive so if you don't have a car it may be a better option to use Uber or Lyft or public transportation or to stay a little bit further outside the city. I would highly recommend not having anything valuable in your car at all and not doing any shopping in the local area or thinking that you'll be able to leave anything in your car as thieves target this area extensively and we felt really bad for the people whose vehicles were broken into in our parking lot. Also at certain times of year, the cormorant flies are a big problem on the boat and around the dock at Alcatraz Island. These are very aggressive species of fly that will try to fly into your mouth and eyes and become very annoying at times. So I recommend being prepared to deal with that in the times of year where that's an issue, which is generally in the late summer, early fall. Don't let a little bit of negativity turn you off from visiting San Francisco or Alcatraz Island. They are both very beautiful to visit and we love going to San Francisco every chance we get. If you want to avoid the hustle and bustle of the big city and the crime that goes with it, you may want to check out Half Moon Bay or Pacifica, California, just south of the city, which are both very quaint seaside towns with good restaurants and great views. Just don't forget about planning for traffic when you're going back and forth to the city. Around Alcatraz, I would recommend Boudin Restaurant and Bakery. This is where the famous sourdough bread has been made for over a hundred years and they have a great restaurant there as well. Make sure to bring your best camera to Alcatraz because the views on the way back to San Francisco at night are unbeatable, especially with the Bay Bridge and Golden Gate Bridge lit up and the fog rolling in. It's a spectacular view at night. We hope you stick around to the end of the video because we had a lot of fun making it and visiting Alcatraz. And if you had as much fun as we did making it, please like or subscribe so you can help us make great content again in the future. Thank you very much.
and hear some of those great views of San Francisco at night. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below, and I'll try and get back to you when I can. Once again, we hope you enjoy this video, and we hope you like or subscribe if you do. The video tour will be starting shortly. Thanks a lot. feet or 90 meters filling the valley with water from the Pacific. The valley became a bay and the small hills like Alcatraz became islands. So who were the first travelers these waters and land on Alcatraz? Long before Alcatraz was a part of Spain, Mexico, or the United States, the first people here were the Ramatush alone. These people used grass reed canoes to fish in the bay and Alcatraz probably had some use to them. From oral tradition handed down to today's generation of Ramatush Alone, Alcatraz was, at best, an opportune place to collect eggs and fish, and at worst was used as a place to isolate tribal members who had violated a tribal law. But the Alone people didn't have much use for this crusty bird rock, and they built no structures on Alcatraz. Imagine sailing across this bay in the year 1775. The hills behind us are covered by groves of oak and redwood trees, and I often wonder what the Ohlone people felt when in the summer of 1775, they saw a large ship festooned with sails enter this bay. That vessel, the San Carlos, was flying the flag of Imperial Spain, and its sailors were on a voyage of discovery, intent on charting these lands that Spain had claimed. On that first written chart of the San Francisco Bay appeared a small rock that was given a large name, Isla de las Alcatraces, which is Spanish for Island of the Pelican. For the next 73 years, this island would remain unchanged, a bird-covered rock in the middle of the bay. The Spanish settled San Francisco, which became part of Mexico in the early 1800s, and then after a war between Mexico and the United States, San Francisco became part of the U.S. in 1848. No one had any reason to do anything with the island until something happened in 1848 in a river to the northeast of here called the American River. Gold was found, and that was the beginning of the California Gold Rush, and the Bay Area would never be the same again. If we go back one year to 1847, San Francisco was a sleepy little fishing and trading village. Its population was about 350 people, about as many as we have on this boat tonight. But as soon as gold was found, people jumped onto ships, tens of thousands of them, and sail to San Francisco as fast as they could out to get rich quick. They got their supplies and sailed up the rivers to pan in the gold fields, and millions of dollars of gold came out of the hills into the bay and was put on large sailing ships and sent out through the Golden Gate. The San Francisco Bay became one of the most valuable ports in the world almost overnight. Now the United States government got nervous we didn't have a navy out here, and the British Navy, along with the Russians and the French, were going up and down the west coast. So the military decided to build a fort at the entrance to the bay. It makes sense to build a fort there. You outfit it with cannon, and they can fire on anyone who tries to enter. But the cannon at that time were famously inaccurate, and the military needed a backup fort. And they decided to build that backup fort on Alcatraz Island. It may seem like an odd choice, but the cannon at that time could fire up to three miles, and that's how far they were from the entrance to the bay, the Golden Gate. 
The first thing the military did on the island was to blast away cliffs all along the outer edges. Boats could only land at the same dock that we are landing at tonight. And at the top of the island where that cell house sits today, there was a large brick fort with a dry moat and drawbridges, and the island itself had over a hundred cannon facing the water all the way around. In fact, tonight, when you're on the island, any time you see brickwork or stonework, it likely goes back to the time of Fort Alcatraz, from the 1850s to 1860s. As we approach the island, take a look at the parade ground, that flat bit on the southern tip that was blasted away and carved out from 1870 to ever entered the bay and no one ever actually attacked the island. But as the decades went by, more and more military moved in up and down the west coast. Over the years, countless men came to Alcatraz as military prisoners, men that were either considered traitors, deserters, or rule breakers within the army. As they made their first trip to the rock, they could see an island that was in transition, and they may not have known it at the time, but they were the ones that would physically shape it into much of what we see today. Around 1900, the military realized they didn't need a fort anymore. What they needed was a proper military prison. So they knocked down that fort on the top of the island and they built the prison building that you see today. It was built by the prisoners themselves. It wasn't really built with the correct materials and it wasn't really built the correct way. Take a look at the cell house on the top of the hill where you're going to be spending most of your time this evening. the prison was built in 1912, however, the military didn't want it. Alcatraz was just too expensive to maintain. We're now into the 1920s and 1930s, and we have the Great Depression and a huge ruckus over a certain liquid, alcohol. Prohibition brings about the time of the gangster, and the American public wants a government to do something about it. So the same way the government declared a war on poverty in the 1960s, and a war on drugs in the 1980s, the government declares a war on crime in the 1930s. Despite the cost of Alcatraz, this island in the San Francisco Bay looks like the perfect icon for the government. First of all, a very small prison island in a very large bay can be viewed out of millions of people's kitchen windows. Every day they can be reminded that the government is doing something for them. And the government realizes that an island, especially one that is often cloaked in fog, can be the secretive symbol that they're looking for. So they take over this minimum security military prison island, and they turn it into a maximum security federal prison island in 1934. Alcatraz Island came with a prison building and was isolated by turbulent and frigid waters over a mile away from shore. When USP Alcatraz was created, the federal government had created the first ever super maximum security facility. And it's argued that USP Alcatraz was the prototype for today's super maximum prisons. Now you'll be hearing much more about federal prison Alcatraz throughout the evening and I don't want to ruin it for you. But I will say that the prison closed in 1963 because of the cost to operate, maintain, and repair it. Alcatraz 
Ashraz didn't see many visitors after the cell house was empty, but as surplus government property, a group of people tried to lay claim to the rock. Shortly before dawn in November of 1969, 80 Native American college students boarded boats and made a foggy five-mile trip to Alcatraz. More than likely, the boat ride was fueled by pure adrenaline because of what would happen next. They came off the boats and scattered all over the island, holding up inside any building they could, and they had no intention of leaving. They had organized a protest and welcomed all Native Americans to join in. They had claimed Alcatraz by right of discovery for a group called Indians of all tribes. These students envisioned shaping the rock into a school for Native Americans, a cultural center, and a museum. And they didn't mind that the island was underdeveloped or lacked fresh water, since most of them had already endured similar conditions on government Indian reservations. Despite the occupation's end after nearly two years, many of these activists went on to lead the fight in other ways. They're an inspiration to today's indigenous activists who continue the Red Power movement. As we come around the last side of the island, you'll start to be able to see some of the historical graffiti left from the Native American occupation. It's left largely in red paint. Try to pick out what's been left down at the dock when we land. And now we're just about arriving to Alcatraz, part of the National Park Service. So many stories to discover from all of these layers of history. So are you ready to land? We'll be landing in just a few minutes. But before we begin our tours, I have some important announcements for you. Let's start with a federal rule so you don't accidentally find yourself in trouble tonight. Eating, drinking, and smoking are allowed only down at the dock. This is nicotine products only because this is federal land, vaping included. Bottled water is allowed anywhere on the island, though, so make sure you're staying hydrated. There's only one smoking area. Please ask any staff member on the dock to point that out to you if you do want to smoke. Some areas on Alcatraz are closed for your safety and for the safety of the birds who are nesting here. Please do not enter any areas closed off by barricades or signs. Remember, you are entering a national park, which means everything here is protected. Please don't take any of it home with you. No sticks, rocks, birds, park rangers. Leave it all here for the future people to enjoy. Restrooms are located down at the dock and more up at the cell house level. If you need any first aid help, please ask any employee for assistance. The road to the top of Alcatraz is steep and long with uneven walking surfaces, so please take your time and watch your step, especially after it gets a little darker tonight. Again, if you have any mobility impairment, we do have a tram available for your use on the dock. If you need to use the tram, please start making your way to the National Park Trail. You can take your friends and family if they can accompany the tram by walking next to it on the guided tour of the hill. Now, six years old. There we go. <laughs> And uh, the National Park Service, uh, the stewards of this island, we've been taking care of the rock since 1972. First public tours began here in October of 1973. So it's been my pleasure to be uh, one of your guides tonight. My name is John. I work for one of the nonprofit partners in this park, Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy. And on behalf of the National Park Service, I want to welcome you all to the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, part of your national park lands. This park has three really simple rules. They mentioned them on the boat. Last time you need to hear them. First rule, eat, drink, and smoke only here at the dock. Smoking includes vaporizing devices. And the only area to, to smoke or vape is on the south end of the dock. You'll see signs, smoking area. Just there, please. Second rule, do not enter a closed area. These areas are closed to keep you safe. They're closed by fences, chains, barricades, sometimes accompanied by a sign that says something like, closed for your safety. Third rule, really simple. Please don't just pick up something and take it home. Flowers, feathers, rocks, concrete, please leave it right here on the island. Take photos and memories. Biggest hazard in this national park is steep, uneven walkways. Lots of places, potentially, you might slip, trip, and fall. So please watch your step. Be careful. We have first aid available. If you need help, please ask. They're ready to help you. But if you watch your step, you're probably not going to need to find first aid. Restrooms, two locations of the island. Restrooms, washrooms, toilets, that's the largest facility. Another set of restrooms, top of the rock, right outside the front door of the prison, right near the lighthouse. One lone family restroom adjacent to the main prison entrance, the door we're gonna take to enter the prison building tonight. Two boats home. This boat's gonna leave in just a couple of minutes. Uh, it'll be back to pick us up. Soon as you can board a boat, it'll be 8.30. 
That gate shuts 10 minutes later at 8.40. Last boat begins boarding at 9.25. It leaves uh, approximately 9.30 to get everyone aboard. We'll make sure you're aboard the last boat. Have no fear about the last boat. We make sure everyone leaves, uh, but if you want to leave at the first boat, that's something to keep your eye on. What we're going to do tonight is take a brief walking tour from here, partway up the road, towards that prison. And once we do get you to the very top of the rock, you'll step inside the main prison entrance, pick up a set of headphones, and you'll take the Cell House audio tour. Audio tour is offered in more than a dozen languages. So if you're looking for a tour in Spanish, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Mandarin, Dutch, Portuguese, Korean, Russian, English, and more, it's waiting for you at the end of this walking tour. Voices on the audio tour are eight separate tour narrators. Four of those men were once incarcerated here. The other four once worked here as correctional officers. They'll tell their own stories on both sides of the bars. Audio tour ends in the dining hall, and you'll see a list of other tours and activities. They're all free, they're not mandatory, but you can't do everything, and that's by design. We have tours happening at the same time in different locations by different subjects. Here's what's on schedule tonight, 7.30, at the main prison entrance, an escape story called Back from the Dead. Uh, following that, 20 minutes later at 7.50, a walking tour about a famous inmate to do time on the rock. Uh, later tonight at 8.20 in the visitation area, the audio tour will take you through the visitation area. It's gonna have a talk called The Glass Between Us about visitation behind bars. 8.30, main prison entrance, a walking tour about the lives of correctional officers called Doing Time on the Other Side of the Bars. Uh, we're going to open up the, so the park service is going to open up the hospital tonight so you get a chance to explore that uh, and more. There's a lot going on. Take a look at that list. So a brief walking tour, cell house audio tour, look at that other list. Uh, you may just want to walk around at that point. You're welcome to. The rec yard is open. The west road will be open until shortly after 8 o'clock, uh, quite near sunset. Any questions? Not a single question. All right. Well, uh, you know, it's not common that a closed prison becomes a national park site. And you know, and it wasn't in the Park Service's plan either to take this place and turn it into a, a place where people can visit. Uh, it, it's a kind of an interesting story, and I know they may have mentioned it on the boat, uh, but it has a lot to do with the red writing up here above us. Indian land, Indians welcome. That's what I want to focus on uh, during our time together. This prison we're about to visit closed in 1963. Last men removed from the rock and sent to other prisons to finish their terms. For the next six years, the island was empty, except for the government caretakers employed to guard this place. The government was spending money hiring people to guard a closed prison, but no prisoners. They did that for six years. Then they decided to get rid of Alcatraz. They offered it up for sale. You could have bought this island for two and a half million dollars. What a steal, somebody said, yeah. Think of the possibilities. What would you do if you bought Alcatraz? What would it be? A hotel, I hear. Yeah. A restaurant, I heard that. A hospital, water park, there you go. I, I, don't, I don't hear well, but I do hear some people coming up with ideas, and that's wonderful. Think about the possibilities. The government nearly sold. Uh, the person who got very close to buying Alcatraz was transparent in their plans. What they were going to do was knock this building down and knock the prison down and knock all the buildings down and redevelop. And what were they going to do? A hotel, restaurants, shopping centers. They were going to redevelop Alcatraz and the only reason it didn't happen, in late November 1969, 80 men and women took three small boats from Sausalito, came to this dock in the middle of the night, climbed over this dock and told the government caretaker, you go home, the island belongs to us. How did that lead to this national park being open? I'm gonna tell you that story at our next stop. We're gonna follow the tram. Uh, each time we move, we're gonna let the tram lead the way. So please let the tram head across the dock, finish all your snacks, drinks, cigarettes, and then follow that tram to our next stop about 200 yards up the hill.
Now's a perfect time for questions as you're waiting. I know it's windy here. It's never a very comfortable place to be. I hope it tries. We've got this uh, little marine layer, not, not quite fog, but it's keeping us pretty cool all day long. Uh, as an example of the closed area, so the chain across the road, it's a simple thing. Uh, they're working back there, our power plant, our workshops, there's some work going on, we're keeping people away. So that's as simple as that. You see a closed area like that, uh, talk to the staff. We'll talk about what's behind it, and if we can bring you there, we will. Um, but we're not going back there. <laughs> so I think uh, most people are caught up. As you're waiting for them, let me ask, when you walk through that building, did you notice a cannon in that building? oldest building on the rock, 1857, the front door of Fort Alcatraz. It's also the first building to hold prisoners. The army used that as a, as a, a jail, a place of temporary confinement. First prisoners uh, jailed in that building, 1857. And uh, this thing's not working too well. Can you guys hear me if I go the old fashioned route? All right. Yeah. So 1857, the army locked up their first man in that jail. And again, jails are today run by uh, cities and counties, generally. Jails are places where people are waiting their trial or serving a term of under two years. There are about 800,000 people in jail in America right now. Half of them have not been convicted of a crime. Then you might be more familiar with prison. That's a place where people have been convicted of offenses. This building right here that says electric shop, that was an army prison in 1870 held 150 prisoners at a time inside. Prisons in America tend to be run by states. There are about 1.5 million people in prison in America. Then there's federal penitentiaries or federal prisons. The federal penitentiary system holds about 10% of our nation's prisoners. And the building at the top of the rock was the first federal super maximum prison, which is why it was saved in a way. Now, when the Native Americans took Alcatraz again in 1969, they were citing their original claim to the rock. The first people here were the Ohlone, the indigenous people in San Francisco Bay. This is their land. They never ceded it. And together with the Coast of Miwok people in the north, they had contact and history with this island. They wanted it back. The group that showed up in 1969 were not just Ohlone and Miwok people. They represented indigenous people across the continent. The group that called themselves the Indians of all tribes. They occupied the island for a year and a half. They brought a lot of public attention and media focus, both to their own drive for self-determination and to the rock we're standing on. 
the occupation ended peaceably. Unfortunately, on the tail end of some bad publicity, arson fires, like the building behind you, set on fire in June 1970. Native Americans left. National Park Service showed up. National Park Service was at that time putting together a new urban national park unit called the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. This island was not going to be part of the GGNRA until the Native American occupiers brought a lot of attention to it. And the Park Service realized people might be interested. This might be a place people might want to visit. We're happy to see you visiting today. We hope you want to learn more about the, the meaning of justice and the state of our criminal justice system today. We have a brand new exhibit that just opened at the very end of your audio tour called The Big Lockup, the story of mass incarceration in America. We think Alcatraz had a role to play in where we are today. Hopefully you'll want to see that exhibit and find out more. Audio tour is going to be next. we got a big climb ahead of us. If we follow the tram, it'll take us right where we need to go. So let again, step back the tram. Tram's going to get a good head start. Tram's going to go up the road, make a turn, another turn, follow the tram. You're looking for the door that says main prison entrance. Step inside, pick up the player, and have a great time tonight. Thank you.